Welcome back to my channel. This is the Backphone One, and it's a controller that turns your phone into a portable gaming device. I've been using it for the past few weeks, and I have some opinions on if this thing is worth the $100 price point, so let's talk about it. Backbone One actually has a number of different options available, and I actually have the second generation PlayStation Edition with a USB-C connector. On their website, you'll see that they have different versions to accommodate all types of phones, including options for USB-C and Lightning, and it also has options for different colors. The Backbone has two joysticks located diagonally, similar to the Xbox controller, and they honestly remind me of the size of the Nintendo Switch, including the keypad and face buttons. I like the buttons and how they feel as they are tactile and clicky, but I'm not the biggest fan of the top trigger buttons. They're easy to reach, but they feel mushy, especially the R1 and L1 triggers. You're able to remap basically all the buttons within the settings app to basically whatever you want them to be, except for the orange backbone button. That button is actually locked into launching the backbone app, which I'll talk a little bit more in depth later in the video. You'll find a headphone jack and a USB-C port at the bottom of each handle, and you might be thinking that this device needs to be charged looking at the USB-C port, but it actually uses your phone battery to operate, and the port's there so you can actually charge your phone while you're playing. The main reason I actually got this controller was to be able to play my PS5 games on my phone using the controller. But this controller is actually a little bit more than that. You can actually play mobile games that take advantage of utilizing the controller. I'll admit that I'm not the biggest mobile gamer, but with this controller, I actually played a lot of different games that I honestly wouldn't have otherwise. I could never just get around using the virtual joysticks or keypad, but with the Backbone One with the physical keypad and buttons, it was just much more enjoyable. I could actually see myself taking this thing with me when I'm traveling to play games, and not having to actually charge the device and being able to charge your phone while playing is definitely a bonus. Backbone also gives you three months free access to Apple Arcade, so I'm definitely taking advantage of that currently with all the available games like Mobile 2K and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. You can also find all the available games on Backbone's website, and I'll actually put the link down below if you're interested in checking it out. I wouldn't normally pay for Apple Arcade all the time, but for months I know I have long flights or traveling coming, I can see myself paying for it for like a month at a time. As I mentioned earlier, what intrigued me the most initially was being able to play my PS5 games using Remote Play. For those who are not too familiar with Remote Play, it's a feature on PS5 where you can wirelessly mirror your video and audio onto your phone or tablet via Wi-Fi or mobile data. You can use Remote Play with the actual PS5 controller and a tablet, which I have done before, but having the convenience of the entire experience being portable, like the PSP, is definitely great. Since Remote Play uses internet connection to be able to mirror PS5, it means that there might be some lag that you might notice. As long as you have decent speed Wi-Fi at home, there shouldn't be any issue with latency when you're playing. I was able to play 2K or FIFA or any games with no problem. In terms of playing with mobile data, if you're in an area with really good coverage, maybe 5G and full bar, you might be able to get by, but I definitely wouldn't recommend trying to play this on mobile data. And yes, you're able to turn on your PS5 remotely using your Remote Play app, but key here is that you have to put your PS5 in rest mode in order to be able to do that. Personally, I usually find myself using the Remote Play, especially when I'm in bed before going to sleep, or if I just don't want to play my PS5 in front of my TV. Last thing I'll touch on is probably my least favorite feature of the controller, which is the Backbone app and the subscription service. The Backbone Plus subscription is optional to be able to use a controller, but you actually have to sign up for the free trial when you're first setting up the controller with your phone. It'll cost you nearly $40 a year, and basically it'll get you some social features such as friends lists and chat rooms through the Backbone app. And it's definitely not worth your money, and I simply just cancel my renewal as soon as I subscribe to it. All in all, Backbone One is a simple and compact controller accessory for your phone, to be able to play your mobile games and just enhance your gaming experience. It is nice to be able to just plug in your phone and start playing without having to worry about charging the controller separately. It also gives you some freedom to play your PS5 not tied to your TV, so if you're looking to turn your phone into more of a portable gaming device, I'd definitely recommend looking into the Backbone One. 
It's definitely more on the expensive end for what it offers for $100. And there are some cheaper alternatives if you're interested in that as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed this type of content and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.